caught domestically, Sean. Um, Labour has today pledged that illegal migrants who arrive from safe countries will have their asylum applications prioritised by plans that will process claims for more than 100,000 small boats arrivals. Yvette Cooper, of course, the new Home Secretary, will announce a change in the law that will enable Home Office caseworkers to process the claims of migrants who arrived illegally over the last 18 months. It's estimated the move, Sean, could lead to up 70,000 migrants being granted asylum in the UK. What are your thoughts on this about Labour? Oh, I think Yvette Cooper's got a big challenge on her hands, but I think learning, for example, that the previous administration had a 1,000 civil servants working on the Rwanda scheme and we didn't manage to return a single person, uh, says that actually there's quite a lot of resource inside the Home Office, which if it's deployed and creates something like the Returns and Enforcement Programme, which Yvette Cooper's getting up and running, puts us in with a much better chance of getting on top of this than we faced for the last few years. But let's you know, be realistic. Everybody is facing a problem with migration. Every European country is facing a problem with it. The United States has a problem with it. This is not unique to the UK. The question is, what can you do about it? And I think in just a few weeks, Yvette Cooper has already shown that probably she has considerably more of a plan than the idea of a Rwanda scheme, which has cost nearly a billion pounds to the taxpayer and not managed to deal with a single individual. I'm not a, I wasn't a fan, James, as you know, of Rwanda, and Sean is right in terms of how much that cost. My concern about safer migrants to get processed first, on the, on the one hand, that's great. Let's deal with the legals. To be told that nearly 70,000 to clear the backlog will be granted asylum in the UK out of 100,000 to get it done, that's not going to do much to quell whatever people on whatever political side say, and I think Sean's right, an issue that cuts across the political divide and is annoying and an alienating and getting getting to many, many people, not just in this country but across Europe. I don't know what the bloody answer is, but do Labour have the answer? I mean, what, 2,250-plus migrants have come in since they came into power? It's no different than when the Tories. Can they make a difference? What do you make of it all? No, it's just it's going from despair to whatever a word for worse than despair is. We've got, what, 70,000 people. That means that's about half of all of the total new houses that we're going to be probably building this year. Total this year. I think last year we managed to build a tiny number, 130,000 homes, something really pitiful like that. And by the way, I'm not at all sure that Labour are going to be able to get those numbers up unless they go and really upset all the kind of NIMBY groups who have been blocking house building for a long time. Even if they did, we've still got such a terrible housing crisis House prices are so disastrous that people under the age of 50 are never going to be able to buy a house in somewhere like the southeast, let alone London at this rate. I'm still going to struggle to do that. I'm never going to be able to do that myself unless you know, the banker mum and dad comes in or I win the lottery. It's neither of those things are going to happen for me. So where are all these people going to live? Where are they going to live? What, literally, with that question, it could all be Shakespeare himself. Where are they going to live? We don't have a moral responsibility to help people that we, we can't actually help. And that's before we get to the 700,000 people who've come legally or all the other people who've crossed over illegally as well who are going to be sent back. Where are we going to put these people? Why have we got, uh, this gentlemen, is, this is very, problem. very, very quickly, because I want to do one final thing before we get you off, but, but why have we... Sean, you say, quite rightly, this is a problem across the world and across Europe, right? Um, why are we at this point? Why can the world not make a decision? Why can't countries process applicants and say yes or no? Why are we in what seems to be this quagmire of confusion and numbers? Because I, I mean this. I think that all politicians really don't... Whether the ones who say, let's open our doors to everybody, or the ones who say, no, we don't want to... I don't think people quite understand how angry the people are. I think they really are. Because there's a cost living crisis and because they can't get houses, education, GPs appointments, dentistry. It doesn't sit... Whether this is the wrong thing to say, I don't actually... I'm not going to apologise. If you, I mean, I spoke to a couple the other day, Sean, in Berry. right? They're what I call jams, just about managing. They've never been on universal credit. They've never been on the dole. They do two jobs and they barely survive. They've got two kids. They've never had a handout from anybody. And he said to me, and I quote, why the hell am I back in the queue to people coming across and dinghies? I get that. I think even Starmer probably gets that. What do we do as a country? Well, there are two issues here. One is migration and the other is availability of housing. And yes, you can mix the two up. But, you know, James, you're living in cloud cuckoo land. If you really think that the cause of the problem of expensive housing is entirely about illegal migration, it's not. 
the failure to build houses for people in the millions, not the hundreds of thousands even, but in the millions, is the failure of 14 years of your Conservative government who have failed the jam people that Jeremy is talking about every single year, every single month, every single day. And that's why your party is morally bankrupt and no longer in government and unlikely to be in government for at least a decade. You've let people down left, right and centre. And the problem is that what you want to do is to go on blaming migrants now for why you failed this, no, to I'm, I'm going to come in here. This is just absolutely outrageous. This is what always happens. Well, and I'm glad to that your listeners and your viewers... Hold on, hold on. Sean, Sean, let him respond. Honestly, your viewers and your listeners are smart enough to see through that casuistry of lies that came to there. At no point did I say this was entirely about anything. But on the pure maths alone, you cannot have people coming in. And I, I don't need to defend the Conservative government. I wasn't part of a, most of that Rishi administration. And when I was out of government, I spent all of my time banging on about how we need to get more houses built. <clears throat> it's a massive problem. So, you know, you, what we didn't hear at all was there any kind of solution about what's going to be happening next. I'd say we have to massively cut uh, immigration and build loads of houses to get the costs down. I'm not living in cloud cookie land, but I'm living in a small rented flat in zone two in London because we haven't got enough houses built. And that is the reality for millions of people. And we're just making it worse and worse by making it easier for more and more people to come here. And what Labour have done was to get rid of a very sensible Conservative policy. And there weren't all, and that many of those, a very conservative policy that says, if you come into this country illegally, you will never be allowed to stay here. And Labour have just scrapped that. Well, if you're someone who wants to come into this country illegally, what does that tell you? It tells you you're going to be able to sneak in and then you're going to be able to stay here forever and live off the taxpayer if you want to. That's not being cruel. That's just the truth. Um, Finally, sorry, Sean, go on. If you want to address the issue of house building, you have to build houses and you have to build them on a yeah. scale. Uh, I, I, I'm going to have my say now, as you've had your say. I think that every single politician from every single party should look in the mirror over the last however many years, because we all know you can pontificate about how we need to build houses for the people, for uh, immigration, for whatever, and then when you go back to your bloody constituency and your constituents say no, they've all done it. Penny Cook, the new housing minister, opposed a plan for 1,500 houses. It is, they're all as bad as each other, but here's the thing. Uh -huh. I don't don't understand, right? And I'm not criticising Labour because they've only been in for two weeks. I look, if Keir Starmer's good to his word, I look forward to it, Sean Wilber. But let me tell you, is he going to take a Labour council to court the first time the local Labour council says no, or a cabinet minister, half of whom, by the way, said they wouldn't allow house building in their constituencies when they were in the shadow cabinet. Is he going to say, you better do this or we're going to sack you? I think, genuinely, gentlemen, I think that all politicians of all parties should have their bloody heads banged together because if we do not get houses built in this country, irrespective of immigration, we are in a mess.